Hello, and welcome to this edition of Roll With It. You've seen many guests on this show before, but one thing's for sure, you'll definitely want to keep watch over this guest, or he will be watching you. Cole Villers, three. I spoke too soon. Pippen breaks loose. He's going to the end zone. I'm proud to introduce my guest today. Of course, we just saw him in the, prior to intro, but proud to introduce Hunter Gillum. And very excited to have you on, Hunter. And I know that one one thing's for sure, I mean, you're you're a player that's going to be talked about within the Ashland program and outside of it for a long, long time. And how does it feel just looking back at it now and saying, gosh, you, I mean, you got you were a big part of that first, the football team's first state championship since 90. You were a big part of that Final Four run in basketball. And I mean, I'm 33. The last time we got to the Final Four, I was eight. So, yeah. I mean, it's been a long time and you have some special accomplishments. It's one thing I, Ash, the community of Ashland, it's like not just a little bit here supporting. If the whole, if, this part of the community is supporting, the whole community is supporting. And we had this, the community behind our backs in both, sport, both sports. It's like we had limited seats at every game. I was just saying this to someone yesterday. It's like we had limited seats at every game, but not a single game didn't feel like a packed Ashland game. Because our fans are so loud, and they're there every single time. It's like I'd hate to be an other team against our fans because they're going to be there every game. They're going to be yelling every time. They're going to be supporting every time they can support, and I appreciate those fans so much. I, I don't think I'm old enough for it to set in just right yet. I think I just came out of it. I'm still on my afterglow, I'd say, right? I just got Final Four. We just got done with the great basketball season. Got the ring in football. Can't complain there. There's no no downsides there. And it's just reminiscing now, I, I just miss it. You know, I miss waking up every day, going to school, got practice later. Miss getting up every day. Oh, I'm a little bit sore. Oh, I'm going to see Gigi for my shoulders. But now it's like I get to sit back, kind of kind of look at everything, take it all in. But I, I don't feel like I'm at the age yet where I'm like, man, I, I really did have it. Mm -hmm. You know, I really did. We all, teams teams good, like everything. I, I, just, I don't think I'm old enough for it to set in like that yet. But I do miss it. That's mm -hmm. one thing I'll say. I, I miss it. I wish I would have kind of sent some film in to go somewhere for college for football. But I didn't feel, send no film in because my shoulders were hurt. But I just feels good. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Yes, and I know you all had a your team. It seemed like you all had a special bond that you carried on and off the court. It seemed like it was a very close knit group. See, at the beginning of the year with uh, Sean and Xander coming in, we we were kind of we weren't like we were last year. And the big thing about last year's group, we were super close. And I think that's what carried us. But through, we used to go out to eat after every practice, or most of them, to trace. We had team bond, like team uh, devotions. We used to do those a lot. And like by the by the end of the year, we were just as close or closer than last year's team. And I think that's what helped carry us through the state and through regions and through districts. Okay, Hunter. I know that one thing that you're especially known for is getting in opponents' heads, and I know that that. That had to be quite an experience, um, even making it onto, onto KSR for that. It is, it is something crazy. And I've always, from a, like a young age, I've always wanted to joke with people. It's always been like, how can I get a laugh here? How can I get a laugh here? And on the court, it just or on the field, it goes straight into that. So like when someone, I sense someone getting mad, I'm like, this is an opposing guy. I'm just going to make him more mad because mm -hmm. that's going to help because nobody really likes to play mad. It's like in a person in a fight. It's like the person that's more mad is usually going to lose because they're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. So like in a basketball game, if he's super mad, he's going to dribble it off his foot. And then you tell him he dribbled off his foot, he can't really dribble, he's going to get more mad, he's going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's just the attitude I have. So when I'm out on the court, I don't really – it's not that I don't take anything serious. It's just when I'm not serious, that's when I play the best. Mm -hmm. And I've told that to so many people. Cole Villers even said it in an interview. He said when Hunter's not serious, that's when he plays the best. And I just, so on the court, I don't really, nothing really, everything goes over my head. So, like, if I dribbled off the, my foot and you say something about it, I'm going to sit there and laugh and tell you I'll do it again. 
But when mm -hmm. I say it to you, you're going to sit there and get mad and then do it again and get madder. Mm -hmm. So I just, any, ch any little thing the opponent does, I'm, I'm trying to capitalize off of. And that also makes momentum for me and my team. Mm -hmm. um, one story I heard in particular about was with, um, with Rowan County. <laughs> Funny one in that game, it was probably fourth quarter, about 30 seconds left, and someone from the student section on their team goes, A23, you're a <laughs> And then I seen some girl over here on the side of the student section, and I said, hey, you got Snapchat? And this was, thir it was fourth quarter, 30 seconds ago while we were down by two. And Cole Villar said, Hunter, what are you doing? I said, my bad, bro. This dude was talking to me. <laughs> and then just got right back in the game. And that's, I, I play, and I like, I just feel like I play better unfocused. Because when I focus on something, I tend to overthink everything I do. So when I think about something too much, then now I'm at a downfall with it. So when I'm not thinking about it at all, it's just like, it comes, it just flows. I just do everything on spot and just play how I play. On offense, I know I'm not the biggest threat, so I'm not going to go out here and try to score 20 points because I know I'm going to miss 40 shots to do that, and then that's just going to hurt the team. So I'm out here trying to get every hand on ball that I can, every rebound that I can. On defense, I'm going to, I don't even care if I play three minutes, but I'm going to come out tired as can be needing the water. It's just I'm trying to get in there and play as hard as I can for the minutes I get and do anything positive that I can. And it's just like, and then, once you do one thing positive, you let that momentum carry you to the next thing positive. Let that momentum carry you to the next thing positive. And it usually just works out in my favor. And then it's like, not necessarily I got to score 20 points, but if I got three, three steals, three or four steals, and I can help Cole Villers Cole, or Colin, Ethan Sellers hit a three-pointer, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what yeah, inspired you this year? Because I know last year you had short hair and... This year you grew, you, you went back, because I'm a big 80s fan as it is, mm. you went with the mullet. So during summer, the whole quarantine, I was like, well, I had the buzz cut two years ago, so I went all the way short to let it grow out to whatever, just to see if I liked any short hair. So then when quarantine hit, I was like, okay, let me grow it out to see if I like the long hair, right? So I let it grow out, and I started getting these curls, which when I was a little kid, probably, uh, all the way till about third, fourth grade, I had straight long hair swooped over to the side, kind of like this, but a little bit longer and straight. And I got it buzz cut, and the woman told me in the chair, I was like, just take it bald. She said, whoa, if you take it too short, it's going to grow back different. And I was like, grow back different? She was like, yeah, we had this person with straight hair come in, cut it too short, and then it grew back curly. And I, was, I mean, at the time, I was like, no, I don't want that to happen because I didn't know how I'd look with curly hair. So she cut it, and she said she did a two, but I, I think she did a one. You could see my scalp, and it was just, <laughs> it was super short. So it grew back curly. So I was like, and then it started, I, I liked the curl, so I wasn't complaining. So I grew it all the way out in the summertime, and then kind of, you can, you can kind of see it here, that I kind of still have a mullet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I have a natural mullet, and everybody that was looking was like, Hunter, you should cut your hair into a mullet. You should cut your hair into a mullet. So I was like, okay, so I played football, and I'm kind of superstitious. So I was playing good in football with the long hair I had, and I was like, I can't cut it during football, right? So I wanted to keep my hair during football. So after football, I was like, I might as well do it. I will, actually, I didn't say I might as well do them all. I went in to get my hair cut short again, and I was sitting in the chair in the hairdresser, and the woman was like, you might as well cut it into a mullet. She was like, you can come back in two weeks. If you don't like it, we can cut it off. But you already have the hair. It's already kind of shaped naturally into a mullet. You might as well just trim the sides and cut it into a mullet. So I said, let's do it because I'm always on the roll. I'm ready to do whatever, whenever. And we cut it into a mullet, and I just stuck with it since. And then I was like, I think it needs to retire when I retire. <laughs> so I retired from basketball, and I retired the mullet. Nice. And, and then I know that... Um, Speaking, one, one thing that you're not retired in, and I know I've been actually doing quite well, is um, your business. Um, you actually have your nickname, Skeep, and actually have some products based on that. Talk about what, what led the, and really just about the business and, more, uh, well, and the products you here. have. Sophomore year, everybody had a spam account on Instagram, which that is like you have a main account where you post. See, this is the thing about Instagram. It's, I think Instagram is kind of fake because everybody posts their smiles, their wins, their laughs, but nobody posts like, 
what's going on behind those pictures. You smile for a picture, walk out, and you just straight face. It's like that, but you post a smile on Instagram. So everybody has their real account where they post all their smiles. And a spam account is where you post everything else going on in your life. And I was like, so I want a spam account. So I was thinking of a name. I put in S-K-R-R-P, Skirp Skirp. Thank the Lord it was taken on Instagram. I couldn't imagine people calling me Skirp. <laughs> uh, I don't know what was going through my head, but I put in Skirp Skirp on Instagram, and it was taken. So I was like back to the drawing board in my head. And then boom, for some, I don't know where it came from. I, don't, I listened to a lot of Kodak, and he says ski mask, like a ski mask. And I, maybe a Kodak lyric came through, and I was like ski, and then I was like ski. So somehow I got S-K-E-E-P, S-K-E-E-P. I made it, and I started my spam there. And from the start, I was just posting memes, just crazy videos, random things, and it started to grow a little bit of hype. At one point, I had six, 600 to 700 follower requests that I wouldn't let on because I kept my number small because I didn't want much people on it because not many people's spam accounts have that many people on it. I think I would capped mine out at like 69 at the whole time. I was like, 69 people, that's it. So, and then as it went on, I stopped posting memes, stopped posting random videos, and started posting just my own content, different content, stuff that you don't see every day on Instagram, stuff that's going to be different, stuff that goes on in my life that's not the wins, that's, the, that's not the smiles, that's just goofy, that makes people laugh, and just having a good time with it. Because I love having a good time in life, and I think everything's really jokes, fun and jokes. I mean, so I was just posting fun and jokes and what I think is funny. And then people, like, it started gaining popularity. People started following me. I was gaining followers daily, and people was like, hey, man, like, you should try to blow up or, like, see if going to be famous. And, like, people, like, enough, when enough people says that, it's like, maybe I do have a chance or maybe I should try. So then I started TikTok, and my TikTok's R.I.P. Skeep. Instagram's at Skeep Skeep. Go follow that. Big trust. You know the vibes. <laughs> so I started TikTok, and I started gaining. Well, I started TikTok probably about a year in is when I started gaining some popularity on TikTok. I posted one video, my first video that, blew up I guess got 500,000 500,000 views wow and then it's been steady it was like a thousand two thousand three thousand for a while I hit a couple five thousand it's fifteen thousand twenty thousand and then I had one recently go to 1.2 1.2 million and I was like whoa that's crazy and I and I kept posting I have another one that's at 750,000 someone actually hit me up on the YouTube one or I mean on the TikTok one, it was like, can we put this on our YouTube channel? And I think it got over half a million on YouTube now. Wow. So it's like, it's out there. And then this other woman, someone posted or sent me a thing on Instagram. And a woman posted me and she had over 2.2 million on it. So it's like, and I, <laughs> and I DM'd her and I was like, can I get some credit for my video? And she said, yeah. And I picked up a couple followers off her. And then I'm now up to 30,000 or 27 point something on TikTok. And I'm at... Uh, 2,200 on Instagram, and then and then I gained popularity off KSR from the state <laughs> tournament. I got on, I refreshed, I woke up and people was like, "Yo, KSR is talking about you right now." I was like, "What? Like, is there clips or because I didn't know how to get it?" And then Matt Anderson, shout out to Matt Anderson, he's always kept me on the KSR clips. Mm -hmm. He sent me all of them, and I was like, "Appreciate it, thank you." And I refreshed my Instagram, and boom, it was like 70 follower, followers came through. And I was like, what in the world? And I probably got 120 to 150 followers off that KSR shout out in like an hour or two. It was like, dang, that's crazy. And this, I've been probably gaining five to ten a day since, just steady going up. And I'm thankful. I'm trying my hardest out here steady on this grind. Yeah, it's very, very impressive to say the least. And um, and speaking of... Um, Speaking of that, what are your uh, what are your future? I know you've got, of course, bright future ahead, but what are your what are your plans going to be? Uh, after I graduate, I plan to go to EKU for business. My brother's up there right now. He's going through the same course I am. I plan to try to take over my dad's business with my brother. So, I mean, that's really all I got. And then, uh, if I can blow up, I'm gonna blow up. I oh. I try to sell T-shirts and merchandise the rest of my life. I think that's a pretty good gig. And Hunter, I know you have a lot of a lot of merchandise. You say, "Oh, kind of cool, like this like this wristband here that we we got tonight." And I know that there's a um, a number of items you sell. Um, if I want to buy something, where do I where do I go for it? Well, you just hit up this at right here at Skeep Skeep on Instagram, 
and get in contact with me. I don't really have a website or anything. I've been handling all the orders. I've ordered out to Oregon, a bunch of different states, ordered all the way through, getting people's, and then I meet up locally, which I'm about to start working on my summer drop, which is going to be, I think, three more tees and a trucker hat and maybe a pair of shorts or something. There's going to be a mystery item, which I don't know. You're the first person to hear that. There's going to be a mystery oh. item. I haven't chose the mystery item yet, but we're going to get something exclusive. Hopefully, you can have resale value one day. That's the plan. Nice. Well, Hunter, it was a heck of a lot of fun having you on today, and no doubt about it, it'll be fun watching. I mean, you were a fun player to watch, but I'm also very excited for your now and for your future. You Thank sure you, got sir. a lot of good things in store. I'm going to let you close it out today. And I know that um, I know you mentioned the Ashland fan base and how they're much they meant to you. So I figured I'd go ahead and give you the opportunity to, to address them. I just want to say I pre appreciate the whole fan base. I moved over to Ashland in fifth grade, and from the time I got here, it's been open arms and felt like home since. And through all my years of playing and through all my years of school and everything, the community's been behind me and behind the teams I played on, and I just want to say I greatly appreciate that. And I also want to say I appreciate My Town TV. You all let my two biggest supporters, my two favorite people in the whole wide world, my grandparents watch every game. They were not able to make it to games, and they got to watch every single game. And I just want to say I appreciate you all for that. You all doing good work, and you all get to let all the other fans that can't make it to the game see the game. And I just want to say thank you. And I want to say big shout-out to my mom and dad. I love you all. You all you all been taking me to games ever since I've been able to walk. And I want to be here without you all, and I want to be able to be the player without you all pushing me the way you did. I want to say big shout-out to the Skeet, the Skeet fam, Big Trust, and to all the moms out there. You all hit me up, too. I love moms. Big trust. I'll see y'all next time on Roll With It. Cole Villers, three. Ah! I spoke too soon. Pippen breaks loose. He's going to the end zone.